what's going on guys it's omniarch and today i'm bringing you a brand new video where we're going to be talking about the pros and cons of the latest equipment update in rise of kingdoms all right let's spill the tea I was very excited for this update when they first announced it because I'm at that point in the end game where I'm looking heavily at equipment and how I can optimize equipment for not only field fighting, but also for protecting my city and also for Sunset Canyon, Lost Canyon, things like that. So I'm the type of player that's really looking at equipment with a, with a fine tooth comb right now. And so having them overhaul the system and supposedly make it better for us was very exciting to me. And I know that I'm already kind of coming off negative because I think there is a, a lot of negative things we have to talk about in this video. However, I want to start with the pros, right? I want to start with the good things that this system brings to the game because there's always two sides to every single coin and there's always th like if we only ever talk about the negative then that's th you know, that's not helpful, right? That's not helpful. Um now the update came out today, okay? So let's just get that out of the way. The update's been live for a few hours. This can change. Lilith can change things. I hope they change things. Um so I'm not, uh, you know, I don't want to say too much and jump the gun, right? Because I know that things will and uh, probably will change, right? Lilith is always changing stuff. But I think it's important to talk about the way the system works right now because it's just important to have that open discussion so we can kind of get our thoughts and opinions out there. So regardless, let's talk about some of the good things that this update brought to Rise of Kingdoms. The first is that the equipment system is much more simplified now. So if you go into the blacksmith, there are only four types of materials now previously there were seven and so we've seen that uh, reduced in almost by half which is really really good this means that um you if you start producing stuff in the early game you don't really know like what to be producing or you know if you're a new player and you just start maybe producing an equal amount of each one by the time you get to the late game well since you are only cycling between four materials there's a good chance that you don't have a ton of a, of a material that is useless right that's kind of like the easiest way to explain it since there's fewer materials it's just you're more likely to have the materials that you need to produce the things that you want so this being simplified is great i'm happy to see this the other thing that is simplified is that it's much clearer now for players to understand which piece of equipment they should be forging for a particular troop type so if you go through here like the legendary tier is the most obvious right there is a specific item for each troop type it's clear that this is the one for infantry and so you know as a new player or as a as a player who's not really too involved with like watching youtube and like guides and everything like that even if you don't watch guides or look stuff up it's still pretty clear which one you should be focusing on for which true type and i think that's very good prior we had things like heart of the saint which gave a ton of stats overall it still does but you know people are kind of like should i invest in it should i not should i get this or should i get golden age they're both same rarity what's a good investment what's not so i think it's a little bit clearer now uh which pieces of um equipment are good for which type the other thing that is uh good is that um they added a new material chest to the tavern so there's the equipment chest now here off to the right and you can open this chest for free uh the same amount of times as you can open the golden chest for free so you can see the timers are very close here and um that's good right so you get the equipment chest for free over time just just in general just from logging in which is nice and you also get to open that uh for free by completing your dailies you not only get a golden key but you also get an equipment chest key as well um which of these keys is more valuable it's hard to say i think golden keys are still technically better like i the game is clearly valuing them similarly because they refresh at the same rate and also um they cost almost the same this costs a little bit less this is a thousand gems one this is 1200 so this is a little bit less but i think in general like most of the drops you're going to get from here if we look at the rewards list um most of the drops are going to be this lower tier stuff here like like overwhelmingly right getting a legendary fragment is less than a one percent chance which is insanely low and that's that's a big problem and we'll talk more about legendary stuff later in the video but um overwhelmingly you're gonna get greens and blue or i'm sorry greens and grays and i think because of that i, I just don't see why the game would value them pretty much the same maybe because it's new and players need more of it i don't know um it doesn't seem like they're of equal value but regardless i'm glad that they added that um i think a new way to get those keys would be nice right and i think that this is where lilith obviously is going to continue 
implementing this new system into future events so there may may be ways to get keys from things like Soroli or Ian's ballads or whatever we have yet to see how they actually reward these keys to players what ways you can get them currently there's only the the ways that we've talked about already plus there's a uh they reworked the hammer of anvil bundle into a new bundle called geared up and obviously you can see this gives you uh some equipment chest keys as well and so you know it, it it's yet to be determined um how many of these keys you'll be able to get for free without buying bundles like this but again i still think it's a pro that they gave us just a new chest to, to to obtain that's always a good thing another pro to this event is that we were compensated with material choice chests which is amazing uh they didn't technically have to do that right uh they didn't have to give us all these material choice chests but they did they could have just kind of converted some of the materials that were no longer going to be used they could have uh, converted that and distributed it evenly amongst the other four um, but instead they gave us the option to choose what we want and now we can use these chests to focus on specific pieces that we want which is good so that's another pro for this update there's also more ways to get materials and blueprints right we now see that the vip shop has been reworked and there's ways for you to get the level one material choice chests for um for materials or for resources sorry and that's really good i love to see that uh, and there's also just ways that you can use gems to get uh different um random chests in here which is nice right that's nice it's good to see they've added more things to the vip shop which means pushing the next vip level now has a new incentive which is good uh that's always always good now there's also the bundles which this is kind of a new way that we did have the hammer and anvil but apparently this geared up bundle is uh should be a little bit better because we're getting the uh, uh the equipment chest keys which is nice um and the material choice chest, whatever that was always a thing but there is also now a supply depot for this so there's a seven day material supply uh, I'm gonna take a look at this and see if this is worth it um, at quick glance it does seem to be worth it to me but I'm not really sure you get 20 material choice chests and of the green rarity per day I think that's a pretty good value but I'll have to take a closer look later but this is just a new way to get materials right and I think that's good overall they also changed the sunset Canyon rewards so um, I actually can't show you without winning a sunset Canyon but I can go into my um in my equipment here and that's where you get these uh, level 2 blueprint fragment choice chest which is awesome so these chests actually allow you to choose which one of these fragments you would like to obtain um, and so that's really cool I think the fact that you get these from sunset Canyon is very very good uh, I think you also get um materials as well i don't remember exactly but either way getting these types of chests from sunset is nice now it has yet to be you know d decided like you could pr uh, previously you could get like golden age blueprints and other purples and here i'm seeing a lot of greens and blues and so that's kind of frustrating but also you did get blues from it before as well so regardless um i think that's overall a pro i think the fact that you get to choose which bl blueprint you want is very very good and the final pro that i want to talk about is that overall there's just more equipment right they've added a ton of new equipment to the game and i think that's always a good thing now a lot of this of this equipment is of the legendary tier there did they did add some like blues and purples and things like that uh which is nice you know it's nice to see but most of what i what, what people are focusing on for sure but most of what i've noticed are um legendary new items which puts it kind of out of the reach of the average player which is unfortunate so uh but regardless new equipment that's a pro in my opinion now let's talk about what this update is going to do to the game in my opinion right and again i want to make this abundantly clear this update came out today and so we have to wait and see how lilith is going to handle this how many of those material keys are we going to get for free from events right if they end up being abundant then maybe my points that i'm about to make will be less important but from what i can see right now um, i think the biggest con of this update is that the legendary equipment gives you an insane absolutely borderline game breaking amount of stats and, and we're going to talk about that um so that's something that we're going to elaborate on in just a minute another one of the cons and this is this is there's only two cons but they're so big that they have their own section in this video um the one we're going to expand on the other one is that there's just more ways for big spenders to get good equipment now right and so we have the same uh you could always buy hammer and anvil so switching that to geared up i i have yet to compare the two bundles and how they compare um but so this bundle is something that you can buy if you're a big spender you can buy the seven day material chest every single week forever and that's going to give you a substantial amount of material 
beyond that you also can use your gems in the vip shop so while it is a pro that there are now new things in the vip shop for people to spend gems on uh 1500 gems for a level 5 infantry random chest is quite a lot of gems right and you can only get seven per week but just imagine you know if you are a big whale in this game you could buy all seven for all of these uh all of these level five chests and that wouldn't really put a huge dent in your gem supply right um, but as a free-to-play player or a low spender this is a lot of gems for a random chest again it's it's random so you may get blueprints that you don't actually need or you may get duplicate blueprints right which is super frustrating because you're spending 1500 gems on it which is a lot and so um this this being randomized has less of an effect on bigger spenders than it does on low spenders right because if a big spender gets a duplicate it doesn't really matter they can just buy it again the next week and whatever who cares so that's one of the cons right the con is that it's much easier for heavy spenders to get new uh powerful equipment through the vip shop and through bundles and through the seven day supply now of course you could make the argument that it's always been way easier for big spenders to get better equipment which is absolutely the case but i think now that there is the vip shop change and the seven day supply i think you know it is literally like objectively it's slightly easier right no matter how much easier it is it's at least slightly easier for bigger spenders to get materials and blueprints so regardless i think i've made my point on that front but the biggest downside is what i mentioned before and that is the legendary equipment being way too strong in my opinion okay so let's talk about this right let's talk about it let's go into the blacksmith let's go down to full sets okay so there's three full sets that we're going to be talking about in this video that is the hellish wasteland the uh, eternal empire and the dragon breath set for the purposes of this video we're just going to be looking at the hellish wasteland set because this is for cavalry and i think that we can make some pretty solid comparisons to other rarity of items but the big thing here is that these items give you set bonuses right uh and not only that but their inherent value is very very high so the rifle of the hellish wasteland gives you 20 percent cavalry attack right that's a lot of stats for one item for one item that's crazy if you go in here and you add up all of the cavalry stats right and we're just talking about cavalry because it's pretty clear that you would never really put this on like an archer right like you could technically put this item on a, on an infantry army but really would you No. so this is obviously a cavalry set so if you add up all of these stats that you get from this entire set plus the troop bonuses down here which are pretty good right like you get three percent troop health that's not calves that's just in general which is cool you get an extra three percent counter attack damage that's really cool as well and five percent for having all six so having all six of these you get an extra five percent defense so if you do the math and you don't get any of the crit special talents right this entire set will give you 76 percent of stats so again that's without the crits but with the set bonuses incorporated, I didn't include the counter attack damage because that's not really apples to apples, but that's kind of an extra bonus, right? So it's 76% plus 3% counter attack damage, which is nuts. Okay. That's crazy to put that into perspective. The maximum amount of stats that you get from cavalry from your technology, like your literal entire Academy is 60. You only get 60% of cavalry stats. If you add up the 10% from horsemen, you add up the 10% for scaled armor, and then you also get 20% from uh, stirrups and 20% for plate armor. You add that all up, that's 60%, right? So think about how long it actually takes to go through all of your research. Think about that. Think about like, if you're on these last stages of like plate armor, for example, we're talking like 120 days or something like that like i started heavy frame today and i actually used a ton of speed ups but with a 10 percent rune and with scientist it was 115 days and then after helps it was like 85 days or something like that so 85 days of waiting for this specific research is is a lot of days it's a lot of days and if you look at it right you're really only going from 14 to 20 so you're getting six percent of stats for 85 days that's mind-blowing six percent of stats 85 days should i repeat it again i think you get the idea so all of your all of your um research gives you 60 percent stats from the moment you start rise of kingdoms until end game it's 60 percent but if you have this entire legendary set it will give you 76 more stats 76 percent more stats on top of that assuming you don't crit it and get a special talent so this set is worth pretty much your entire research which is nuts right it's crazy so you can see like my biggest issue here is that they give just way too many stats right that's my opinion i think they give too many 
but what we have to do now is is compare these items to the purples and the blues and the greens and see how they compare right because if this set gave me 76 percent of stats but the purple set gave me you know 68 percent of stats well the difference there isn't that big right it's not that big and obviously this is way more cost prohibitive so it may not even be worth it because you have to spend so much more right and then same thing with blue if blue gave you like 58 percent like you know it's it's still kind of close right but if you go through each in each individual um item slot right so if you go through weapon and helmet and chest and everything like that um there's no real set bonuses for the purples okay um and if you got the best thing from each category for calves without set bonuses and without getting legendaries you would get 48.5 percent of stats for purple equipment right so and that, again that's assuming no special talent crits whatever there's a, that's a pretty big difference that's almost 30 percent it's almost 30 percent more stats for going for legendary now the problem with that is that purple equipment is still going to be pretty hard to get as a free-to-play player right or even as a low spender it's going to take a while to get all purple equipment on your on your cavalry so it's not even like you can say okay well all the pay to wins are going to have all legendary equipment and all free to plays will probably have all purple equipment and you know there's a 30 percent difference between the two which i still think is way too high right but that's not even the scenario that's going to happen right that's not even reality it's actually worse than that because a lot of players aren't going to have full purples whereas uh, uh, players who are willing to spend a lot will have the full legendaries right and so this actually is a problem that's going to get worse over time because the more time passes the more equipment uh people who are spending a lot will get and you know the amount of time uh, the amount of equipment you can get over time is kind of capped at free to play players because you, you're limited with the free chest and things like that so what i'm saying is in the best case scenario if you're a free to play player and you have all of the best purple equipment on your calves and you go up against a a, a large spender they will still have about 30 percent more stats than you right that's that's a lot that's half an academy we just talked about that that's half of your research you literally get 60 percent of stats from research they will have a, a, a half they'll have 50 percent more tech than you right that's wild and, it, and we already talked about how many days it takes to max that out but like i said that's the best case scenario and it's not going to be the reality and the reality is that most free-to-play players or low spenders are going to have a mixture of greens and blues for a while yeah and th if you have the best combination of greens and blues for cavalry um you're sitting at around 33 and a half percent of stats and that's with like the vanguard set bonus and like all that stuff right and the wind sweat bonus gives you an extra two percent so even with set bonuses you only get 33 and a half percent from a mixture of the best greens and blues for you know for calves and so we're literally talking about um if you were let's say you're a free-to-play player hypothetically and you've been saving up universal heads from the day that you started the game until uh attila and takeda come out and you're able to somehow expertise both attila and takeda as a free-to-play player because you've been saving the heads you haven't done anything wrong you you max attila takeda because you heard how good they are you wanted them as a free-to-play player right well your attila takeda is gonna have 33 and a half percent of equipment stats whereas the pay to win equipment on an Attila Takeda of equivalent uh, expertise is gonna have 76 percent of stats that means that the large spenders even though you both have expertise Attila Takeda have 40 percent more stats than you right that's just insane it's insane because of how long it takes to get the amount of sculptures required to do that we're talking about like 1300 sculptures right that's wild that's just mind-blowingly the difference is staggering and so that's the problem that i have with this update is that it's really bad for low spenders and free to play it's really bad for them because you know the the stats that that you get from these items is just absurd it's it's absurd and i think you know I, I obviously don't have all the answers i don't know how to fix this but i think a way to start would be to literally take every single piece of equipment in the entire game and just cut its stats in half just just start there because i i seriously think 76 percent is just ridiculous it's just ridiculous um i don't know like i'm i'm open to feedback and suggestion if somebody can to explain to me why that why it's good that they give so many stats then i'm all ears um if you have a 
explanation as to how free to play and low spenders can get these blueprints and equipments much faster than I've explained in this video. Please give me that feedback. I'm eager to hear it. Um, if I'm missing something, right, I would love to be educated, but as it stands like this update seems horrible for low spenders and the problem is that's a majority of the game right you don't want to have updates that are bad for a majority of your game you just don't and and this is you know this is it's kind of like the second strike right like we talked about the healing update a few weeks ago and how they quote unquote fixed it and then it turns out that the fix wasn't really that great and now they revamped the equipment system which i was excited for and it turns out that like it benefits big spenders and now free to play just like how are you going to get this equipment as free to play i just don't see it happening right i just don't because i mean look at the materials needed for the weapon alone that's crazy now granted some of these only cost like 40 right which is fine the boots and the gloves only cost 40 but that's 20 million gold that's still a lot of gold right that's a crazy amount of gold for comparison boots of the hellish wasteland that's 20 million gold if you look at shio's return which is also legendary that's only 15 right so these sets actually cost more just in general um and so you know again that's that's the problem that i have with this now another con of this system and this is much less uh it's much less of a problem but with these sets being in the game um you're almost punished for not crafting them so what do i mean by that well um if i wanted shio's return uh for the eight percent infantry defense well if i get this right because it's a little bit cheaper and i'm almost there in terms of how many blueprints i need if i get those instead of the sturdy boots of the eternal empire well now i just use the materials for this right which one of the materials is the same so they're almost the same in cost these are a little bit more gold right um but they're almost the same in cost but if i equip shio's return and then i equip the rest of this set without the boots right i miss out on that six piece bonus so i literally lose five percent of of that stat just for not having the boots right and we're actually talking about this one so that's the problem that i have with these sets existing is that it literally kind of forces you to get this set right because if you're going to be like min maxing you really want that five percent like that's crazy that five percent like that five percent is uh, almost as much as like the boots or the gloves give just by default right so that's that's a huge set bonus to have or to miss out on just because of a single piece not being a part of that set and so that's another con that i see here is that you really you're you're almost forced to work towards these legendaries and none else right like why would you work towards another legendary the only reason i could think of would be if you're building a set that is a mixture of pieces to garrison a flag or your city or whatever um and that has the most amount of general stats as opposed to just one specific stat that's the only example or scenario where i can see that happening but besides that if you're not planning on garrisoning or, or defending a flag or a city then you really should be focusing only on these legendaries and that kind of makes the other ones pointless right I don't know um and it's even worse if, if you crafted them right because now um you've already invested all those materials into that piece and you know you you really you're kind of punished for not using the the set because you miss on the on the bonus right and now i'm repeating myself so i think you guys get the idea of what i'm trying to say here there's an opportunity cost that you're really missing out on uh, um by using some of the other legendaries in the game now it's almost like power creep on equipment itself never really thought about it like that is that a conspiracy theory i mean we've seen power creep in, in legendary commanders obviously but are they starting to do it to equipment like in a year from now are they going to add more legendary equipment that's even better than what, what they have now like i think that's it's a slippery slope and i certainly hope not anyway that is it for this video guys i've rambled enough about this update i hope that i'm wrong and I hope that if I'm not wrong, that Lilith changes this pretty quickly because again, I just think free to play already have it hard enough. The epics are far outdated, right? They're just way too outdated at this point compared to the legendaries. And now they have to deal with getting absolutely shredded by somebody with 50% more stats than them. Just, be, I don't know. It's crazy, right? It's crazy. Um, so hopefully something changes or I'm proven wrong by them putting an abundance of events in the game that give away equipment and materials what are the odds of that i'll pretend i'm being optimistic but let's be real
anyway if you guys made it all the way to the end of this video and you found this video enjoyable or you learned something or it was informative then make sure you drop a thumbs up on the video it really does help out my channel a ton if you're new around here subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video comment down below your thoughts on this update i i would love to hear from the community on this i think this is a huge update and it changes the game a lot so i want to hear your thoughts below as always my social media links are in the description below so follow me over there on instagram twitter uh twitch and my discord you can connect with me over there finally and i say this every video but my favorite way to play rise of kingdoms is through uh a, an emulator on my computer called blue stacks there is a link in the description below to download rise of kingdoms for free for your pc or your mac um it's called blue stacks it's my favorite way that's how i'm playing i experience less crashes when i'm playing this way compared to an older phone so give it a try link down below with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace